Hi, my name is James Sansbury. Uh, in this video series, we're going to be looking at features. Um, if you don't know what features is um, or have heard about features, but are you know, just watching this video because you heard about it from someone um, and thought it'd be interesting to find a little bit more about it, or maybe you know uh, what features are, um, how to use them, but you just want to get um, a, a more in-depth look at how to use them in development and stuff. Um, Either way, we're just going to start from the from the very um, basics and just start getting increasingly complex. So, um, typically in Drupal development, you've got your content on your site, you've got your configuration on your site, and in a Drupal website, all of that stuff lives in one place, and that one place is the database. Um, and so, it it becomes um, increasingly hard to kind of draw the line between okay, this is this is a certain um, setup configuration item for my website, and this is you know content that's on my site. And once you get into a situation where you're doing a little more hardcore development, and maybe you've set up um, a development website or something like that, um, you know, then to if you have a production site that you need to then get these changes to, um, it becomes more and more hard when you don't have a line between this is my content, this is my configuration. And as we can see in this graphic, um, you, you kind of end up with this scenario over here. Everything's just all in this one one big bucket of stuff. We've got you know our variables, we've got our content types, we've got actual nodes content, um, we've got blocks that maybe have content, or maybe they're node blocks. Um, all this stuff just kind of lives in this one big bucket like this, and you uh, end up with um, you know. No way really to, uh, if you're deploying from a dev site um, to a staging site or from a staging site to a production site to kind of easily um, draw that line between these uh, particular items. Um, and so what the features module does uh, is it tries to come in and aid us in that process of uh, drawing a line between these items. And as you can see over here on the right, um, you know, here we have... Um, our actual modules underlying, um, you know, you know, maybe here, here's the core modules, and then features on top of these are is kind of like organizing these components into actual. Um, it, it's a module itself as well, but it's it's a module that has a specific use case um, that it's trying to satisfy, and what this this picture even kind of lends itself to is you you start to think of Lego building blocks or something. And um, so, you know, what we end up at the beginning when we download a module, say you download views module from drupal.org, um, it just ends up being one of these boxes, right? You know, maybe it's this green guy right here. And uh, you turn it on and what does it do for you? It, it appears to do absolutely nothing for you, right? You just turn it on and, and really all it is, is a tool. It's a, it's a tool and if you don't know how to, to use that tool, um, it appears to do nothing. It's just a tool sitting in your toolbox. Um, whereas what features um, tries to do is say, let's satisfy a use case, a feature. Um, and you know, one common example of that is a blog feature. And that's actually what we're going to go through, um, through the, throughout this video series. So a blog feature we can start to think about in more concrete terms, whereas the views module is thinking in a very abstract um, it's a very abstract tool. I just want to create lists of things. Once we start saying, let's create a blog feature, we can say, okay, well, I need a blog content type. I need a view of all my blog posts. And you can start thinking about, okay, now I, now I have actual things that I can sink my teeth into. Um, and what we'll do when we build a feature is we're gonna say, well, I've, I've set up this view let me get this view into a feature, into um, an actual module that when I enable it and turn it on, um, I get this functionality that I want. And that's really what we're going for with features. What makes this all even more confusing is we've been throwing around this word features and we don't really um, have any good definition for what this word means. <laughs> we're using it in the context of an actual feature in, uh, as, a, as in a use case that I want to satisfy. Um, but as you can see here on drupal.org, 
um, there's this module that we download that's called the features module. And what this module is, it's actually, it's a features builder, really. It's helping you build a module, um, get, get these things the same way that you would be doing in a best practice environment where you're actually getting your views into code, you're getting your fields into code, or any of these things, the configuration side of things, getting those items into code, you'd be doing that a lot by hand. The features module that you download from drupal.org will actually help you uh, get that set up. So it'll actually um, give you some tools at your disposal to get some of that stuff into code. So we can come here to the features UI and I can get this, this view actually into code and then I can download um, what, you know, an actual module and this module that we then download, we also refer to as a feature module. Um, and so this, that's why it can get kind of confusing because we have these, we have these three kind of different definitions of the, of the word features in different contexts. So we have features with a capital F kind of, we like to refer to as, as the features module that you download from drupal.org. Um, and then you have feature in the sense of, you know, just the literary sense of this use case that I'm trying to satisfy. In this case, you know, we have a blog um, kind of use case that we're trying to satisfy. And then we also refer to features as, you know, this module that the features module itself is helping us create. So once I download this, you know, we would actually get a module. So, you know, if, you've, if you're familiar with module development, you see a .info file in here, you see a .module file, and this is what the features module that we download from Drupal.org is actually writing this code for us. It's writing PHP code for us in the same way that you would be doing by hand. So throughout this video series, we're going to take a look at how we can use the features module to aid us in deployment um, from, you know, if you're working on a development site, a staging site, and then want to deploy that, that work that you've done to your production site. Um, we'll also look at how it can make us, as developers, it can make us um, very productive. Um, a lot of shortcuts to a lot of the, you know, typical, very tedious tasks that we as Drupal developers um, have to go through. And then we'll also look at how it can help us in Drupal distributions. If you're working on a distribution um, similar to Open Atrium or Open Publish or one of the other Drupal distributions, or maybe you're working on an internal platform um, where you have lots of multiple sites that are all using the same code base. Um, all these different scenarios, we're going to take, uh, you know, just look more in detail the some of the gotchas that we'll run into working with features in, in all three of these different scenarios.